Hello, my name is Steve Evans, and I'd like to welcome you back to a three-part telling of my testimony. Now, I'm the person behind the websites that you may be discovering, which are the HealingStreamsUSA.org, ForerunnersForHim.org, and the TheLastDays.info. And, and you may be finding us on these YouTube channels by the same names, too. Um, what I'm doing with this is showing you how I got to be the person that I am, in some sense, at least what launched me on my Christian journey. And it, it involves three episodes. One I call the unsolicited visitation, which I've already hope you've seen by now, which tells my encounter with the God of this world. Then, following that, it's what I'm coming to now. It's the night of terror, because for about two years, from 1969 to um, in the winter of 69 into um, spring and summer of 1972, I was on a journey to try to reunite with the God-like being that I had, uh, had revealed itself to me. I thought it was the true God, but it was what the Bible calls the God of this world. It was Satan or one of his fallen angels. And at that time, demons had come into me with the memory of past lives. And other demons I, I was picking up through sex, drugs, and rock and roll, which I was devoted to in those days. And so... Anyway, so now you get the picture, and my life is just going down despite my efforts to try to rise up into this new life that had been birthed in me by this semi-divine encounter. It was like a, a, a parallel or a parody of the Christian rebirth, and, and I thought everything was going to start over and be fresh and splendid, and it kept going down into bad trips and, and dark thoughts and a not good life. And, and finally, uh, I had the, the horrible experience of, when I was still back at Duke University, of losing my soul. I mean, who, to whom do these things happen? I, I, I was in my room, thoroughly depressed, and I had an experience of my soul rising up. Now, if you'd asked me five minutes before, I would have said, soul, what's that? I had no idea, but it rose up within me in disgust and departed never to return. And I went from there thinking I'd go to the Canadian Northwest and just hide out because a person without a soul is a danger to humanity and I had a scrap of, of integrity or, or courage. That's what I would do and I couldn't find those scraps. And so I turned myself into the psychiatrist I was seeing and he had me locked up on my ward at Duke and they examined me for two weeks and then couldn't get anywhere with me, shipped me out with a bunch of drugs to a halfway house. On, on, as I like to say, the theory that half a brain is better than a crazy brain or drugged up brain, um, their drugs being better than mine, that was the idea. They were unable to help me at all because my world had come crashing down. I'd lost my soul. And they didn't understand this. They didn't understand anything about the spiritual counter I'd had. I'd actually needed some wise Christian person, but I didn't know any. I had abandoned Christianity in a headlong pursuit of, of some other God than the Christian God. And so here I was now trapped and, and believing my life is totally over. I just need to end it. I need the big sleep. So I, I got out of the halfway house, um, went to the bus station took a taxi from the bus station because I had time and money to get some sleeping pills, about two bottles, I don't know how many it would take, headed to my parents' home. They had just come up and put me in the halfway house earlier that day. Now I'm heading back to Kinston, North Carolina to do myself in there. And when I finally arrived, it was in the wee hours of the morning just before sunrise, and I took the pills as soon as I got into my room at the other end of the house from my parents, Long Ranch House. And as the drugs began to come into me, the sleeping pills began to come into me, something about the grip of what I was in was broken off of me, and I was beginning to think, well, there's a possibility. Maybe there'll be transformation now. Why don't I head outside? The sun's beginning to come up, and this is the embarrassing part, but I thought it would be better if I'm naked, so I took my clothes off and I went outside. Good thing there weren't any cars going by in our suburban neighborhood. It was still early. But I was outside only long enough to hear the birds, think it was all going to happen. I don't know what I thought could happen because I was still me on the inside of this, locked in to a demonic, um, what, what I didn't know was a demonic deception that had begun on that night of the unsolicited visitation. And so eventually everything came crashing down. I slunk back into the house and lay down to die. Now I was ready for the big sleep. 
the only problem that didn't come to me. And those of you out there who are thinking that, oh yeah, the big sleep will be the answer. Suicide will be the answer. Let me tell you. I'd been raised in church. I didn't know Jesus from Adam's house cat. Read the Bible, had no comprehension of it. I'd even been in Israel. And I had been, up until this time of doing drugs, a doobie, always doing the right thing, always making friends, never making enemies, never, you know, a little bit here and there that wasn't quite right. Pornography, you know, okay. Um, but on the whole, everybody would have said, Steve, he's a nice guy. He's a good guy. If, he, if he's dead, he must, he must be all right. No, I would not have been all right because up from the depths that I didn't know existed came an army of demons crawling all over me. Tiny little things. I couldn't see them, but by their size, they just seemed to be like scabies or something. They were running around. I could hear them. It was all of these voices, a chorus of voices, gleefully letting me know how they were feasting on my soul now, what was left of it, and they were going to be feasting on me into eternity. And no one would ever know that my end was horrible. You do not want to consider this path. And it was indeed so horrific that I, I, I found physical strength against all those sleeping pills to pull out from it, call and, 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 and head to the bathroom to wash my face, try to wake up, slap myself silly in front of the mirror and basically stare myself down and say, listen, you idiot, you got to come up with an answer to this because you do not want to let them get you. And while I was standing there staring into the mirror, that being from the unsolicited visitation came back around again. Now, he had come around times before and always with the idea that I would unite with him, with it or him, and unite with it, and, and then everything would be rosy. I would be, I would be a vessel for its life, and, and, and its life would be pouring through me, and that would be great. That would be the union that I had originally been looking for was never meant to be, and the true God was thankfully keeping me from being possessed by such an evil spirit. But at the same time, I didn't know any of that. It showed up, and it, it was not happy with me over all my past failures to, to rise into the union that it was calling me into. And now it was giving me a whole life review of all my failings, all the many times it had come to me, all that it had done for me, and all the many times I'd fallen away out of weakness or cowardice or intimidation or whatever it was, shyness, you name it, I was being shown it and I completely agreed with the judgment that I was unworthy of the life that I was being offered, that I was guilty as hell as a sinner and deserving to go there. And so now it began having passed me through a whole life review. It was pronouncing upon me a sentence of eternal damnation, eternal separation from this God being that was the God of this world and this universe, so far as I understood and believed, uh, a separation from all that was human within myself and all that was life within this God. And, and there was no hope, there was no hope because I'd already been offered everything and had failed miserably. So what was the point in a second chance? So that I was being consigned to a hell of eternal separation from God in a universal consciousness that had once embraced all people in terms of its touch and now was shrinking, collapsing upon myself in this hell where there would be no life. There would be nothing of a human emotion and there wasn't for 10 years. And, and there would be nothing but insanity, rage, ruin, and my own guilt and despair and absolute hopelessness. And then it departed. And I staggered out of the bathroom, still naked, cried out, heard my father awaken and start coming my way as I passed out. And of course, he was able to get to me in time or he wouldn't be here now, thank God. He got to me in time, called an ambulance, they got my stomach pumped. But when I awakened, I was absolutely convinced and I remained absolutely convinced for 10 years that I was in the hell the Bible had warned us about. Having lost my soul and having been through the last judgment, through the whole life review and condemned to eternal death and separation, there was nothing of life left in me and no possibility of ever entering in life. All I had was my own consciousness as a dead soul 
And that was united with nothing but dead beings too. There wasn't any point in talking to them. They could have no idea that they were a part of my collapsing universe. Now I know that sounds megalithic or, you know, megatronic or whatever, maniacal. Or what, it was crazy. Of course it was crazy. I, I, I thought my mind was united to everybody. So when my mind was collapsing everybody that I have been united to, death went out of them. They went on to life somewhere else. No doubt about that. But in my universe, my entire universe had been consigned to hell by this God of that universe. So that was, that was what I awakened to. And that was what I lived in for 10 years. And you cannot imagine, my friends, you cannot imagine the horror of living under those conditions. The absolute terror and the, bone, the rage and hatred that I had for myself, for bringing myself I never blame God because I deserve the judgment of eternal death. I don't know if it's that way for actual people in hell, whether they're mad at God or just mad at themselves. But I was the one that was in hell with no hope of ever getting out, entirely blaming myself for the choices I made that had gotten me there. Now that's, I'm not going to leave you there, except at the end of this video, I've got to go on. But that, what I went on to was for 10 years this, this earth was not earth to me. It wasn't even another planet. It was hell. What I thought of as the biblical hell that was actually a collapsing consciousness. I thought the Bible had it right that there was a hell and there was a heaven, but they had it wrong in trying to describe it in the terms that they did. I still didn't believe at this point in, in demons and devils and angels and all of that, but I certainly believed in the spiritual realities that I had encountered. And, and the collapse of my entire life into this hellishness. <laughs> You've got to get the next message, which tells about my rescue from all of this by the Lord Jesus Christ.